another episode where Leo's run away. Um, that's Just kidding, he's back here with uh, Taylor um, and I'm here. <laughs> um, my name's Chloe for everyone who doesn't know me and this is the Alt Base podcast. Uh, Alt Base is a media production team here based based in Fidianga here. Um, we cover anything from, like if you want to hire our studio to do whatever you'd like, uh, we can do anything to do with film for you guys, including, I'm um, assuming, maybe editing and stuff like that. But um, if you're interested at all, give us a quick Google search, you'll find us, or on any social media. Um, our podcast is live three times a week, and sometimes extra when we have a pop-up show for a special guest. Uh, we go live at 7pm every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. We predominantly live stream on YouTube, which I'm assuming you're watching us on. Um, please subscribe and don't forget to give us a like, even comment if you'd like. Um, speaking of comments, we do have a live chat that runs with every live show, so feel free to um, drop us, again, drop us a comment or ask us a question. They will come up during the show. Um, to my left, I have the beautiful Tipaya. How you doing, Chip? Kia ora, that was great. That was Thanks, like, bro. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah, woo, woo, never doing it again. No, no. <laughs> How you doing? I hear you've just had a birthday. Yeah, yeah. I've just turned 20. So, you know, I've gained so much wisdom within the last few days. You know, I know a lot more. No, mm, actually, mm, I know nothing. Mm. Uh, <laughs> less, probably less than I did a few days ago, which is great. Um, yeah. Gain something, right? Yeah, you gain yeah. something. Yes, hopefully. Yeah. Well, yeah. And uh, I hear your wrinkles. It makes you... Yeah. Oh, wrinkles? Yeah. Nah, yeah. not, 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 from, not from this view team. <laughs> She's looking pretty wrinkle-free. Um, uh, tonight we have a very special guest, another lovely lady, uh, Georgie. Hello. Hello, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, thanks. Yeah? In safe hands. <laughs> yeah, I told you, I'm the pilot. I do this all the time. Like, would you trust me if I said um, I was a pilot and I would like to take you for a flight on my plane? As long as you've got your granny pants on. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Funny that. Speaking of underwear, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm not really, but anyway. Um, <laughs> so, Georgie. <laughs> okay, Georgie, how long have you been in New Zealand? Because you were from... I am from Liverpool in the UK. Um, right. I've been in New Zealand since August 2019. Ooh, 2019. Yeah, so nearly three years. I can't count, yeah. but I am a pilot, so. <laughs> oh, cool. And how long have you been here in the lovely Coromandel? Oh, for pretty much most of that time, actually. I um, came here from Auckland in October 2019, but then travelled, did the kind of, you know, hippie travel thing for like four months, but then came back here because it's just so beautiful. Ah, I agree. Have you made your way down south at all? Yes. Yeah. As far as Queenstown, not not any further than that. Not like what is it, Stewart Island? Bluff and those. I don't think I've been places. there in like since I was like two, three. Stewart Island. Yeah. Oh wow. Is that like a place to go? Isn't that a is little it? island? Where's our Google searches? Um, uh, is it? Isn't that a little island off the end of the uh, end of New Zealand where like penguins so. live and stuff? Cool. I don't know if penguins live there, but oh. there's definitely a little island at the end. Of New yeah, Zealand. yeah, yeah. And you went there. Yeah. Yeah, like when I was like two. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I've yeah. been, I could fly there. No, I'm kidding. I would like to go to like the South Island again though, because like I feel like it's been such a long time since I've been there. Yeah. Mm. But it's like looks so good. Yeah. But it maybe does. maybe when it gets a little bit warmer and the weather's not so shit. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's a totally different landscape. It's crazy how it is, just right? how different it is. Mm. Mm. And would you prefer because I assume back home it's not necessarily. I mean, I could be wrong. Like the warmest place. Um, do you prefer the North Island over the South? Yes, I like to be warm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Would you like to be home at the moment with the heat wave? <laughs> no. no. No? So that's like an extreme? Yeah. Yeah, oh, okay, cool. But I mean, it is very wet here in the Coromandel tonight, so I mean, are you sure you don't? 
I mean, how's like, my hair? <laughs> it, it shows with my hair. <laughs> I think it looks great. Thanks. Oh, cool. It so, flooding out like for Noah Kitty and stuff, eh? Yeah, and there's two slips on between like Tedaving and Kuatunu. Mm. Mm. Yes. So hopefully everyone's. No t- going anywhere then. Yeah, so hopefully everyone who's stuck at home is watching <laughs> us. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> um, and what brought you to the Coromandel? A boy. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Moving on. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, cool. I mean, and but I stayed for the nature, obviously. (laughs) Ah, yes, yes, yes. That's what they all say, right? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, (laughs) there's not much else going on. (laughs) She's not in the winter. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) At least you got someone to keep you warm. (laughs) My teddy. (laughs) Is that his name? Uh, His name's Tali. Oh, so Teddy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. Kitty and kitties. I hope that's not the two Oh, cool. And what do you do here? Uh, I currently um, do property management and cleaning, and I work at the fabulous Blue Ginger. Boop, boop. Yeah. Boop, boop, boop. We this are massive fans so of Blue Ginger. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's a pretty special place. Mm. Yeah, special people too, right? I know, and not in a weird way. Well, like, that, that's why you—that's how you know it's a good place. Like special people, you know, the food's good, the energy's good. Yeah, it's you, always packed there too. Like especially yeah. when I want to get food. When I'm working <laughs> at the pub, I'm like, oh, I don't know if I want to wait that long because by the time I want to order, I'm too hungry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's so good. Yeah, I think it's like my Friday, um, Friday special like meal. I wouldn't call it a cheap meal because I eat no. anything all the time yeah. but like it's but it's oof, like it's, it's a super fresh food and and you just you know you're gonna get you know something quality like a real good feed are you a big fan of asian style food i'd like to think so i've not been to asia but i do enjoy the food <laughs> <laughs> do you cook much yourself i love to cook ah, yeah awesome yeah and what kind like type of cuisine do you like to cook with um i love a challenge so i like to try new things um and recently i got into cheese making vegan Ooh, cheese making cool. so I, I make um cheese from like almond nuts and cashew nuts so yeah are you a fan of nutritional yeast i like nutritional you do? i mean I'm, i wouldn't say you know the flavor is amazing but it's it's good for you, so I eat it. Oh, cool. Do you like <laughs> nutritional yeast? Um, I went through a phase when I was like vegan and stuff like that yeah. and trying to eat healthier. I ate it all the time. Yeah. But then I started having recipes, like reading recipes and trying them out where they would just pretty much use it like it's a seasoning, like 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 chicken salt. And then I nah. kind of just got over it. Yeah. And I was like, nah. Nah. Can't actually remember the last time I ate it. So. Yeah, just it literally tastes like yeast. yeast. Like this, yeah, like, it's, it's <laughs> not, not a particular yeah. favourable flavour. Have you ever been tried out vegan eating? I did veganism for like four years. What What brought you back? A bacon toasty. <laughs> Was that when you were drunk? Because I know, it like, could have been. It I know a lot of people that were like vegan, and then they were like, "Oh, I just couldn't do it because every time I got drunk, I just kept eating like burgers and stuff." Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah nice. possibly. Because yeah. you know you're depleted and you need you, you yeah, know, like you, you just don't want to make in front a, of you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah and how, how? I mean, it might be a bit more common now, but I mean, like how um, accessible is like a dirty, greasy vegan burger? At the end of your drinking night, yeah. like yeah, I don't it's think it's very—it's not very accessible. No, but especially it might be a bit more here. now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. back home in the UK, like there's a a real vegan renaissance. Like y- yeah. you can go yeah, and get yeah. like a full takeaway that's vegan, but not, mm. in, not in town. <laughs> <laughs> it would be cool if there was though. Yeah, I think yeah. Well, like the renaissance is a great word to use because mm-hmm. I think there's a there is a massive trade. Well, when I went to go try be vegan and stuff, it was like at least four maybe five years ago and even then it was like there's recipes where you use like nutritional yeast and everything yep. and you'd use chickpeas and everything yep. you know now there's a bit more diversity yeah and um i wouldn't even it might be a big thing to say like acceptance because i know people are still like eh, 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 eat a lamb chop and then yep. some vegans are really hearty and are like yeah, yeah. square <laughs> up bro yeah yeah, I don't know where I was going with that, but I think like the like because I was vegan for a little bit too. Like I think we've all gone through that phase. Um, but like <laughs> just when I phase. yeah, <laughs> it's a phase, mom. <laughs> no, I'd like to th- like I want to kind of carry it on throughout my life because I know it's good. Yeah. But like um, when I started being vegan, I was like definitely a bit more conscious about like how to make things taste better and like mm. how to cook a little bit yeah. better. I feel like my cooking's definitely gotten better because of 
like being vegan because you like have to cut out so many things that mm. you already totally yeah 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 i mean it takes a while especially when you first become vegan to you know you have to read the back of packets because yeah, like yeah, yeah. there's meat products in, yeah. in the craziest things that you wouldn't even think of and um and also i think one of the important things is you have to have time because yeah you, that is you know, the biggest thing the start yeah. because like i didn't even know what like to eat half the time so i was like eating toast and soup and stuff i was like mm. <laughs> i don't yeah. hope that doesn't like last yeah. like this because it wasn't going well yeah. yeah yeah and accessibility like groceries are really expensive now True. Oh, like definitely. just by pure fact that i'm poor <laughs> i um don't actually eat that much meat um at least when i'm getting takeaways and even then I don't really splurge out that much mm. on like meat valuable things. I wouldn't consider myself as someone who's like trying to be vegan. Yeah. But um I just every almost yeah, pretty much almost every cooked meal I have is considered vegan. Mm. Bar maybe the odd time I use a bit of like cow titty milk <laughs> <laughs> or like a bit of butter a car, salted butter. Oh, okay. Salted butter, man. Oh, oh yeah. Like, it makes uh, everything taste so good though. I'm just, it's so bad for you. I mean, I was called so Kiwi good. Girl, bro. Yeah. Butter on everything. Not, not everything, but like, yum. Yeah. yeah no. I think like one of my favorite meals is like just butter and butter and toast is so good do you it's okay okay i try to figure this out i had a genuine this conversation as an with english a, person yeah, oh, 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 well maybe it's another take no but it's like a meme where it's like sometimes just like butter on toast is the shit and it you is. eat like the next thing you know you're like standing at the toaster eating like six pieces oh yeah. i don't think i go oh, that okay. far but like okay well it, yeah yeah especially with salted butter oh yeah it's yeah just the best. i was gonna yeah. say do you think that's like a woman thing i hear lots mm. of people talk about um like because we're women and whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we <laughs> start <singing laughs> <our sentences now. laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, but then it's like you, you know, how everyone says like listen to your body and you tend to like maybe not specifically eat what you're craving because you get things like sugar mm. and cravings and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But like you sort of eat what you sort of, your body like wants. I'm trying not to sing. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, you should sing. Do you think it's like, like, what are your experiences with like your womanly sort of intuitions when it comes to food? Uh, yeah, well, I, I, I love to eat, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I do think there's something in that, like listening to what your body's telling you about, you know, what you should get. But and especially if you are on a vegan diet, because, um, yeah, you're not getting the, you know, easy protein from meat and things like that. But uh, I don't know anything about nutrition, so I can't, I can't really say. I can't give you any good content. But that's that. like the thing. Like a lot of people, I found this so annoying. Like they're like, oh, you're not getting enough protein, and blah, blah, blah. but like there's actually so much protein in like um all like the vegan alternatives that yep. you get, mm. and it's just so frustrating. They're like, oh, you're just not getting, you're not getting enough iron, you're not getting enough of this, and you actually are like. It just depends on yeah. what you're eating. It's not necessarily the diet. It's just what For you've sure. chosen to eat yeah. in that diet. And it, that's just kind of you know, you know what we've been brought up to believe. Yeah. So. Mm. And like this, like you need milk to make you healthy. I'm oh. like, yeah. actually, it's actually less healthy. I literally had that conversation with someone. I was like, yeah, milk <laughs> gives you strong bones. So I was I'm like, like yeah, so because my school, my, yeah. my bones are going to break without drinking milk. Yeah. Like, oh my god, wow. Yeah. Yeah, no. I had a crack. Do you. <laughs> God. <laughs> this is hard. Okay, okay. No, no. We will get back to the interview, so all the stuff. So, um, for someone who hasn't studied, and I am going to assume you have, um, what was that process like, and what did you study? Um, I studied criminal psychology and. This was a long time ago. I actually graduated in 2012, so showing my age a little bit. Um, so how, it was old, a, how old are you, if, if you don't mind? 21. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 32. <laughs> you look so good for 32. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. It's because she's the Leo. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, you yeah. just, you look, it might have been the vegan diet, you know. <laughs> it's, the vegan, it's held you out. The vegan fans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> What, what was the question? <laughs> psychology. Yeah, so you oh, yeah. studied criminal yes, psychology, I did. right? And, yeah. and your question was, how was the process? Yeah, it was like studying and the whole uni ideal. Yeah, uni was good. Uh, it was typically, you know, you'd go. it was like the first time that I'd had freedom from like f my family. So it was like, go to uni and literally explore everything and get wasted and do all of the, <laughs> you know, those typical things. Yeah. Um, but also uni was like, so shaping for my 
personality, um, especially criminal psychology, because where I grew up um, in Liverpool was quite rough. Like it was poor and um, we were, it was like a poor, uh, poor town. So like it was where all ships used to get manufactured and things like that. But in the 80s and 90s, like they moved all of that overseas. So it was just like ah. poor and there was loads of crime. So it was, it was so good put on a, uh, kind of educational spin on um you know what i was brought up with like criminal you know seeing criminals and yeah, you know yeah. it was like you know it was it was like fun but and scary like growing up in that environment but um also yeah <laughs> i don't know what did you, <laughs> what did you yeah, no, in saying that did you like yeah like getting sort of the other side of yeah the whatever the analogy is view yes yeah. exactly. did, you, did that did you find you were any more forgiving Oh, f- yeah, forgiven, probably. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, forgiving, like, you know, to people in certain stereotypes and situations, oh, you know, t- people it- tend to think, oh, you're all criminals, and I mean, yeah. they are to some extent, but I mean, you sh- when you get an understanding of... Yeah, absolutely, how like, why. Um, so, like, when if, when we were growing up, you know, there was lots of bullying, and, and you kind of, now I kind of understand that actually, you know, there was probably some, you know trauma or issues that they were dealing with and they were just taking it out on someone else and that's kind of a a nice nice realization you know that yes these people were bullies but you know they obviously had something else going on um but that obviously takes some time (laughs) to realize (laughs) (laughs) sorry sorry i'm trying to how long was the um how long was the psychology course or uh, it was three years. I think that's just like a t- typical bachelor's right. degree. What can you do from like uh, that degree? Like, it's what kind, kind of the the it's kind of set out to do um, like police profiling and to go into the police. Yeah. And but that was that was never my intention. Like my uh, it was it was really my way to to understand my my upbringing and um, you know. But it, what it what it did lead to was um, my men, my career and mental health, right? Um, which was which is really good. Um, is that something that you always wanted to do? Um, not necessarily wanted to do, but I feel like um, my kind of my upbringing, like um, the way I was brought up, and um, then going into the criminology degree, it was just something that I was naturally made to kind of do go into. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, just like growing up and like there was like a, a lot of violence in the area and you yeah. just kind of, you, you learn to become like, st- like walk on eggshells, you know, you just like kind of become like, I don't want to say invisible, I was definitely not invisible, but like, you know, like a shadow and you just listen to people and, and I think that just like naturally helped me with my criminal psychology degree. It's yeah. just, you know, like listening is a massive part of, of that. It's cool. It's great. I like. I, I was about to say before. I'm just really trying to practice listening actively. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not just thinking about some bullshit I'm going to say I, next. I, I, I just love that concept because you know we we think naturally. Oh, we've got ears. We can listen, mm. but it's it's so much more deeper than that, really, isn't it? You know, you can you can listen to people, but you it's about hearing the words, really, mm. and kind of dissecting them really <laughs> I guess um and going with your career in mental health what did that involve what how where did you end up when you headed down that path uh yeah I I luckily one of my friends um was a psychologist and he um got me a I, I did volunteer work in in the career that I ended up in for eight years and um it was mental health advocacy. It's kind of like a, a broad umbrella of of supporting people who didn't have friends or family to like you just like go along to like um, like if they were being discharged from hospital or they were having some medical treatment or things like that. You would just be there to make sure that people were making the best decisions on their behalf because often people would like not be able to think properly. If they had yeah. you know they lacked capacity or. So yeah, I can't remember. I'm so sorry. No, I, I, I just can't fine. remember the question that you're asking me. <laughs> just, it's obviously not a good question. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> it's absolutely fine. Um, and have you? Is that a, like a legal thing? Are you 
like a legal representative of them? Yeah, it, it was. Uh, so there was two pieces of legislation in the UK and it was called a, a Mental Capacity Act and mm. the Care Act, which you don't have here. And We should have it here. There should be something. Yeah. Mm. There, there has been a new piece of legislation released recently for people. It's called the Ministry of um, Disabled People. Which is, I think yeah. I saw that Did on you? the news, but okay. uh, before I got here, yeah, like this lady was talking about something about like this disabled parking, but I don't think that was the full picture. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so uh, it is a, a real positive step for New Zealand because um, your mental health laws are very, very outdated and just don't accom- accommodate for, um, you know current like living. that's quite soothing because we have like really bad mental health here and stuff as well yeah. <clears throat> especially with like our suicide rates so yeah 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 so it is a positive step in the right direction and i think one of the positive things about this new ministry of uh, disabled people is that it it makes it easier for people who do have mental health to you've got one person to go to and say you know these are all my needs and they'll support you rather than going you know to nzta and ha- getting them to help you with your your, your license and, yeah you know going to all different people this is kind of an inclusive way which is really good yeah, yeah. that that honestly sounds really awesome would that come under because i know um in my sh- my short years um <laughs> i've met quite a few i suppose you'd call them like young adults that have like uh, I don't know if it's the correct term, but like the mental disabilities or, mm-hmm. or just uh, setbacks, etc. Um, to you. you know, and it was always like a question, realizing like, oh, you know, I'm like a young adult now, and I'm like leaving home, all that sort of stuff. And I'm like, what happens to these other 21 year olds who are somewhat un, uh, incapable of looking after themselves? Is that yeah. some, is that the sort of so <clears throat> back in the UK, the 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 piece of legislation, the Care Act, was like you know it underpins that. Everyone has the same rights, you know, just because you have a disability doesn't mean that you should be discluded from going to university. You just mm. you might just need someone to support you with that. And I can't say I know very much about what, what it is in, in New Zealand, but um, I think it's important to say that, you know, the statistics say that one in four people in New Zealand have a mental health disability or... Is know, that what people... Is that what you call it, like, with, like... um. You've got like bipolar and stuff like that as well. Is that would be classed? I as would a say disability? that would be categorized as a disability. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Well, it's an el- they literally are called mental illnesses, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. So, so it's, yeah. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well, I think that's very awesome, and mm. uh, hopefully, you know, that push for the change is coming yeah. very soon. I, I hope think. so. Yeah. Um, yep. uh, try hit a personal nail. Have you? had um any experiences with your own mental health and mental health systems of course yeah? i'm 33 you know, it's not, <laughs> it's not <really> easy. <laughs> and um how have you how did you find navigating the system did you have support as um, someone say for the on the reverse side you know that like yeah. as someone i and by all means i don't want to um no please do uh put any labels on on you mm-hmm. but you know as someone maybe who could may be considered someone who's like maybe not disabled to some extent you yeah. know going through <clears throat> navigating the system um so for me i I had a bit of a a long way to get to the answer of that but um i have never really gone through the mental health system and i think um my my biggest the biggest reason for that is um having come from uh i'm i'm the oldest of three sisters and so i've always been the one that just has like looked after everyone else and one of my biggest things and i i kind of only realized this when i turned 30 and came to new zealand was i just never ever asked anyone for help like i just like you know it's just something that i i dealt with on my own um and i think my my job in in mental health was a therapy in a way I was supporting other people and in turn learning about psychology and understanding every other people's behavior but also understanding myself so in a, in a way I was using my job as a way to you know bring that in and, and heal myself in many ways um, but then when I the the job led I just didn't have any 
like positive hobbies I you know I was going to work which was exhausting like 60 hour weeks and then oh my god and then yeah, just like going out and getting wasted on the weekends like yeah. like that's just the way you deal with it you, and then you go to work and and then you get wasted mm. but there's only so so much of that that you can do and then it just like it starts to creep into your life like uh like the job was amazing and we were having such good good like impact for people with mental health and dis disabilities but like when you start not acknowledging the good work that you're doing and you just you know you've got lots of self-doubt then you know that it's like you know it's not working out properly and I think although I haven't gone through the mental health system myself I when I came to New Zealand I was like just riddled with self-doubt and like you know didn't like myself very much and I met a, a a local life coach and like that was like the best thing that I I have ever done for myself is like get someone to like support me with like you know empowering myself and just believing in myself like that was like a proper life changer. Wow, that sounds I think very that's like I think that's really common. Like a lot of like I feel like I definitely struggle with that sometimes, like just like not believing in myself yeah. and like not. Um, not praising my well not praising but like acknowledging like the good things that i have done For like sure. i feel like i just don't celebrate those th i feel like a lot of people don't celebrate yeah. them enough and then yeah. they just i feel like i get like a lot of self-doubt when it, especially when it comes to like kickboxing and jujitsu it's just mm -hmm. like and just life in general i think it's definitely yeah. worth and i, I love things. the way you said celebrate because you know we can we pick ourselves apart when we do something wrong but we we do forget to acknowledge ourselves yeah but like you know it could just be something little but we should totally celebrate that. Yeah, I'm like definitely the first person to like pick myself apart when I like I know I could have done better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a conversation just recently with a friend of mine, and I also suffer from just not backing myself. Absolutely, like pretty much doubt everything I do. Mm. Just, just absolutely think the worst. Um, and my friend's like, dude, you really need to cut this out. And I was like, mm, what was me? And they're like would you if i was saying what you were saying right now what would you tell me and i was like well obviously i tell you that you're an amazing person and you've done so much and you're accomplished and you're so strong mm. and all that stuff and she's like yeah well start saying it to your fucking self and i'm yeah. like "Ooh, yeah that's yep mm -hmm. yeah. but it's so hard i don't know where i really don't know where that stems from or like how what environment that grows in but like it's it's actually really common and it's quite scary to think that you know everyone has that little nasty thing in their head where they just don't really support themselves. And my friend yeah. calls it the green gremlin which is uh, <laughs> pretty cool. <laughs> green gremlin. Yeah. Put that in your <laughs> mental illness book. Um, I think that was a bit far. Sorry. For people I that do struggle with like mental illness and stuff, is there anything that you'd like recommend for people to do or sites to go on? Or I, I would just say having some kind of um, daily routine or something, you know, like fill in your own cup up like I think it's important like you know as women especially we you know, we're nurture and we give so much time and energy to other people and I just think it's so important to you know f serve yourself first and yeah. like you know if it's just like oh you, you like to go on a run 10 minutes in the morning just do just do something for yourself like I think that's that's been that the biggest thing for me living here in in Fitianga and New Zealand in general is that there's just a lot more space space to do things. Well, I find that for me anyway, I've yeah. kind of made that space naturally. Um, but yeah, just yeah, do those little things that you enjoy. It's the beauty of this place. I've heard it more often than not lately that you know the Coromandel itself is quite. I don't, I don't know how known it is, but like just it. It's commonly referred to as a place to come to heal, mm. and I've always personally like, in a. I've never heard that before. No, I've never heard it. Well known, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, no, oh, I, I just heard it. Yeah, I don't know, it, it, but it, it 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 speaks for itself, you know. Like you're right. I I totally know what you mean with, with how much space you have here. Mm. As um, a young person growing up here, I'm, I'm considered local. You and I suppose it's the same for anyone in a small town or anywhere when you grow up where you are, sort of. Um, that I just wanted to get away from the place. And oh, I was like, oh, it's so tiny, yeah. this is terrible. Yeah. Uh, the beach, like, I'm like, I don't want to go to the beach. <laughs> the yeah, the beach sucks. <laughs> and then uh, progressively over the years, the more I left town and went further overseas, saw different beaches, whatever, I was like, oh my God, I want to go home. Like, And coming home, it was just beautiful when it's yeah. like, 
learning to appreciate what spaces you have yeah. as well though because not everyone's able to you know True. hop ship and stuff so I think that's also important too is like learning how to create your own safe spaces mm. yeah I mean it's not as cool as ours but yeah yeah I mean you can try <laughs> um would you if there were opportunity what um things do you think need to change with the New Zealand mental health system uh for you to maybe uh go back to your profession or possibly uh work in another job um I I'm I'm just don't know enough about New Zealand's mental health system to say, um, but I've just definitely noticed here in Fitianga, you know, people are struggling and I, just in my job, like, you know, you give someone like a little bit of time to talk and, and you know, they'll talk about their story and, and what they're going through and, you know, everyone's going through something, right? And I just think there's just not enough space or, People aren't given that safe space that you talk about to actually feel okay with talking to people. You know? I think and that's I definitely think... true. Because, like, oh, not me personally, but, like, I know a few people that are quite close to me that have, like, that struggle with mental, like, health. And, like, yeah. there's actually not a lot of support here. And it's actually kind of sad. Yeah. Like, you have to go to, like, teams to, like... Mm just kind of get some help and that's yeah that's too far away and often people don't want that kind of formal setting to yeah, go you yeah. know you don't you don't want to go and sit in someone's office and you know talk you yeah know, people yeah it's just they're not going to tell you how they really feel yeah like especially in that setting and especially you, you've got one hour and you yeah. need to you know it has to come in a more organic kind of way you know yeah. that's the i think that's the beauty of just like you know you you've got like I do cleaning and property management and what I find that you know if someone's at home whilst I'm doing cleaning if, if I just give them that that space to talk then you know it's like it's quite powerful it's I, I just yeah love yeah I yeah. don't know what I'm saying <laughs> no yeah I, 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 <laughs> no, I, 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 I get what you're saying yeah. Yeah. yeah and it's just like what you were saying organically and stuff and just I think a lot a lot of it's validation as well um, I think in New Zealand we have a long history of harden up, mm. and I mean oh, I still hear people. I still hear a lot of like older generations, be like, ah, uh, it's just uh, we, we never know, knew about yeah, you never knew about mental, mental off illness in a spa twice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, we've never, we need, we didn't have mental illness when we were young. Yeah. This is a new thing. I was like, no, no, just because we have terminology they just now talk about and too. stuff like that, it's like. You know, yeah. it, it, and it's about validating it. Like, yeah. I mean, and which is tricky because it'd be hard to have a conversation with someone that just absolutely doesn't know how to validate your emotions because mm. they might not know yeah. what they are. And like, it's, at some stages, you probably don't either. But yeah, creating those safe spaces and um, yeah, having it come never, organically. That should never stop you from, you know, voicing your opinion just because you uh, think that someone's not going to hear you. I think it's important to say it, I guess. Yeah, yeah, but it, like the way you're saying that um, when things come easier when they're organic, mm, I just mm -hmm. mean like, and having that flow usually yeah. comes from someone. I mean, you don't have to be like, uh, something, something, and something happened to me, this person's evil. You, like by validation, I don't mean that someone has to be like, yeah, they're evil. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean just validating. Acknowledging yeah, your, that yeah. you have feelings. Yeah, yeah. And, and that you're feeling them. Yeah. Like whether they uh, whether someone thinks that's right or not, it doesn't, yeah, give, sure. doesn't fucking matter. But like, you know, <laughs> just, just that simple validation thing is really important, which I think is something that's growing. Um, and I hope it's growing. I might I, be wrong. I think, I yeah. think massively because like s social media has its bad sides obviously but mm. in terms of um social like talking about mental health that that is being spoken about a lot on social media and mm. i think that's you know probably one of the most positive things that i've seen about social media is that it's like people are just okay with talking about having a shit yeah. day or you know it's not so much of a niche anymore no. even on the internet too like yeah. it's just a well i mean i think it is on a spectrum you know some things go a bit far like it's very trendy to say certain yeah. things yeah, yeah yeah but i mean it doesn't take away from the fact that you you've got a space where you can say it yeah you know that that is really important i totally agree with you yeah yeah um i think people are talking a lot about it on social media but to be honest i actually feel a lot better when i'm actually not looking on social media because mm. i find that sometimes mm. you can um i definitely feel like i do i get caught up in like 
like comparing myself to like other people's achievements oh, and stuff and then I'm like oh, I just get like stuck and then but I definitely think like taking a break from like social media definitely helps with my mental health like otherwise I'm just like oh, I want to do this and I want to do that mm. and there's just so many things that I want to do when when you when you mean how do you feel better in those times when you take a break I just I just feel like I'm not like there's no pressure like to like be doing something because mm. there's so many kids that like especially like my age or even younger they're like oh they've got a million dollars or that they've got this and they've got that and I just feel like I'm like I should be doing more and I just like yeah, yeah. but like I know that like this is my own journey and like you know just take my time and yeah mm, that's very true and that's another aspect of like mental health is it's always gonna be progressing like that I wouldn't say the answer because I wouldn't say there's like always an answer to certain issues but like it's always going to progress like, as technology progresses like I mean the way we um, talk about self image and stuff like that I mean although there are certain ways and things that can help now I mean wouldn't have been the same 20 years ago because they don't have the exposure mm -hmm. to social media like we do now so that'll like always progress so mm -hmm. like finding that medium for you yeah. is where it's at you know you're going to take a little bit of no I wouldn't oh, but say something pretty harsh, but like you know, take a little bit of responsibility when it comes to mental health too. You know, you get to kind of that saying. You know, you can't someone can't help you if you don't want to help yourself. Yeah, self responsibility, yeah, 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 a little top, bit. Yeah, yeah. you got to hold yourself accountable for it. Yeah, yeah. Which is also another hard thing. We're talking about lots of hard yeah. stuff. We are. Yeah. <laughs> oh, just just one thing that I want to ask everybody: What are you list? Uh, what are you watching at the moment? Because you know, I'm having a bit of a tough time with what I want to watch on Netflix. I feel like I've filtered through everything I want to watch. So. Mm. Is there anything interesting that you're watching at the moment? Well, actually, I, I don't have Netflix. I've got Disney Plus. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's bougie. She's bougie. I have that also. So oh, okay. Oh, I'm not watching. watching. Oh, oh. <laughs> no, bro, they're not even my accounts. I'm my, just using yeah, everybody yeah. else's my, account. My sister's yeah. account. <laughs> I'm not going to pay for that. Uh, yeah. I still illegally yeah. stream. So. Oh. Um, um, I am currently uh, watching... The odd movie or something here and there, um, but for the last like couple, maybe couple of weeks in the background, I've had Orange is the New Black. Mm -hmm. I on. was watching I that for love a it. bit, like a few years ago. I liked it. I was mm -hmm. a massive fan back in the day. Yeah. I'm just like waiting for the parts that make me cry and I get real anxious. But I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna so cry good. over a fiction or death. <laughs> <Woo>. <laughs> but that's all I'm pretty much watching. Yeah. And then I watch the odd movie every now and then. Yeah. Anything on Disney Plus? Oh, I watched the Bob Bob's Burgers movie the other day. <laughs> oh, I love Bob's Burgers. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> is there a movie now? I've only watched yeah, the cartoon. Oh, okay. I haven't seen the movie either. Maybe, is, it good? is it good? Maybe I'll I fell check asleep, that out. So it was pretty late when I put well, it on. Maybe it wasn't that good if you fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was um, since we're talking about television, I was having a conversation with a friend who's pregnant, and I was like, ooh. Not that I have kids who know anything about it, but I was a bit like, <laughs> what are you going to do about TV and screen time? Like, yeah, and she's, yeah. And she's like, well, I haven't really thought about it much yet. And I was like, well, you should. Because um, I have so many kids. But then I got, I got to the, well, yeah, because I'm so <laughs> opinionated. Um, but were you guys TV kids? Oh, def I, I'm sure I was. Like, when I was like a little bit older, I was definitely into like I just watched TV all the time. Oh yeah, yeah. I was definitely a TV kid. Like even when I was super young, I mean, I would still play, um, like with my friends and stuff outside, and it was like this thing where like the street lights would come on that means to go home, and then it would be like dinner, Simpsons, yeah, and Simpsons then like yeah. the bed, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I feel like in the afternoon, like in the evening, there wasn't like any good like kids cartoons kids stuff, like yeah, I yeah. used to get like up earlier on like a Saturday and watch all like Ooh, that's yeah, when Saturday all the good cartoons, cartoons were yeah. playing <laughs> I was like yeah yeah I was a big fan of like Sticky TV which is like a children's thing on like a Sunday yeah, morning yeah like what now uh, but then like I feel like oh what, what now, now? It was I, what now not I watched TV. that like a few weeks ago and I was like oh bro this this <laughs> doesn't look as good as it used to be okay where's all the gunge gone Guns? ah yeah. yeah 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 but yeah I was thinking it's trying to my friends I was like ah here I am trying to be a dickhead and be like, nah, 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 nah. and I was like, whoa, I was a TV kid. I was like, how do you manage that? Mm. I mean, because we obviously just spoke about the effect of just social media specifically um, on people's mental health and stuff. But like, how are, do you have an opinion on like what people should do when they're about to raise kids in this environment? I, I mean, is really, it that bad? I think it's really hard to 
have that judgment without having kids like you know you know you don't know how mm. stressful it is like having to look after a child all the time like yeah but where do you think it um i wouldn't say hypothetically but i mean where do you see it going then like i mean is it going to be something that's worth discussing in the next 10 years? Is it just going to become normal, do you think? Probably. Like, my, I can only think of my, my nephew as an example, and he he watches, like, YouTube videos, like, you know, unbox and oh, things and dude, stuff like yeah. that. But what I noticed was there was, like, you know, people sending him messages. Like, you can send messages on YouTube and stuff yep. now. Yep, hit our live chat. Yep. <laughs> and and so, like, people were sending him messages, and I was like, like that's, like, sketchy. Like, that's making me sweat. You know, he's like, weird. Yeah, so, like, you know, that shit, like, I, like, I don't know if there's going to be something. Yeah, I guess that's a bit scary, especially if you're a parent. Like, yeah. you, don't, you don't want your kid talking yeah. to some random... Nah. Yeah. I mean, in saying that, did you guys ever go on a meagle? Yeah, like, a couple of times, I think. Yeah, well... <laughs> well yeah, we, 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 we were going, oh, my God, young children talking to strangers on the internet. Did you? Yeah. yeah. But it was funny. Bro. Was yeah, back in up. the day, it was chat roulette, and that oh, shit was... Oh, like, last year. Yeah. <laughs> Friday night on, on chat roulette. Yeah. <laughs> At your friend's house, we had, like, the computer room. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, that, oh that's some traumatizing stuff right there. Ooh. Um, this is gonna be super out of the blue, but um, it's a trend I'm following on TikTok where this guy shows you really cool websites that you should know about. Mm. And some of them are like really handy, like for example things like Grammarly. I'm sure we've all seen the mm -hmm. ads, and Leo uses it. Just just wanted to put that out there. Just want to put that out there. Um, and, <laughs> um, and some of them are like real quirky as well. Like, um, no, I can't remember any, but <laughs> is there any, random, just randomly, is there any cool websites that you guys have come across before that are like, like, they're like helpful? Do you use any like editing apps mm. or no? No. I would have to look on my phone. I probably use a few. I wouldn't uh, say there's like any app, like, uh, like not internet websites but i do like to use like a lot of those um what are they, like apps on your phone like the brain games i like oh, to yeah, use yeah. those oh, cool. yeah yeah cool and i got like this one where like there's like, this journaling one i think because i feel like i want to start journaling you know Ooh. i want to look back on my life one day and see what i was doing on the 25th and i can talk about this podcast you know <laughs> i i think journaling is a yeah. very powerful way to be in touch with your own thoughts as mm. well it's really good Really good way to talk to yourself. What if your hand gets tired? Well, you could voice journal. Oh, yep. Next well, technology. I don't know why I <laughs> genuinely was like, well, what? Oh my God, yeah, well, okay. <laughs> do, you, do you journal for like... I've gone and, through stages. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, like I, I journaled this one and it's out of the blue. It's been a couple of months since I have. Um, but I, I find it puts your thoughts into perspective a lot and actually like... Like shit. Like, yeah, yeah. Like looking at what you're thinking and yeah, stuff. Yeah. yeah, like, nah, that's not cool. Mm. Or, yeah, it's a really good way to. Yeah. Yeah, I want to jump on that train. Mm. Mm. I don't have the self discipline for a lot of things. How can we hold you accountable to that? Oh, I really don't know. Maybe I should start posting it. So, no. I, really, I don't <laughs> want to be that guy. I'll start like an Instagram page for like fitness and like my journal. No. Go for it, man. Go for it. Who knows? Watch the space. Couple years. Is, yeah. your, is the journal in, um, for your fitness? Is that the. No, I just want to like. I just, I don't know. I've seen like a lot of people journaling on TikTok and stuff. I'm yep. like, mm, you know, I want to try that out. See if it works. You should totally yeah. try it. Put Do it. it. Yeah, I will. I will. Yeah, there you are, go. You, yeah. are you going to write it or voice note? I'll probably write it. I feel like I'm better at, like, I like to write things down yeah. with, like, pen and paper. Mm. I have no opinion. I have no discipline. The amount, of times that, yeah. that's it. I've, the amount of times I've, like, started one. I was one of those kids that had, like, heaps of notebook, like, yeah, notebooks. Yeah, yeah. They were, like, empty. Just, like, had random shit in it. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I used to scrapbook, actually, when I was younger. No, Scrapbooking is like, really cool. Yeah. yeah. Are you guys friends from school? We're sisters. Yeah. Oh! Yeah. No way. Different yeah, dad. 
Oh, yeah. And I've got a few of those. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not related at all. <laughs> we're not. <laughs> are you just pulling... Are you no, we're not related. Yeah. This isn't their girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. oh. no, sorry, I'm just like, digging a hole. No, yeah. no, 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 I don't actually know. I mean it tonight too. You're all very good liars, by the way. I've noticed <laughs> since coming in here. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, we used to go... We go to this... Uh, like we went to the same school. Because <laughs> oh. there's only one school here. Yeah. Which is unfortunate. No, I'm, I kidding. Have a I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I love the babe. What kind of school did you go to? I went to an all girls school. Catholic. Oh my god. Oh, oh my god. Yeah. Please How did be that go? Haspola. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that, yeah. Um, is it like a what's the equivalent? Like intermediate through high school or like all ages? Because here we oh, have an area school. So, no, so mm. um um primary school we call it. Preschool? Is that like, what you call it? So you're like, like a wee one, just yeah, starting. like up until like ten. That was like yeah. mixed school, but mm-hmm. right. like where I grew up, it was everything was like Catholic based. Like all the all the good schools were Catholic. So. Do you yeah, like kind of still go same, to? Yeah. Do you go to church, or no. do you have to go to church at school? I I had to go. Yeah, to like things like chapel school. and stuff. Yeah. Are, yeah. Do you are you religious at all? I consider myself spiritual, but not religious. That's fair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Main. Do you like Ouija boards? Ouija, bo- Ouija boards? Uh, Ouija boards? Uh, because I, if you, you're keen. Uh, <laughs> no. I well, actually would. I actually, actually would be keen. Well, I, me, and my, like, me and my girlfriends when we were like 12 did like, uh, you know, pretend, oh pretend Ouija board. And then someone and was, was moving their hand. Yeah. It's like we, and it was like in this abandoned building and it was like the most terrifying thing I've ever done. And like there was like, you know, like, they were trying to kick people out, but some of them were still occupied. And like <laughs> oh, the, this guy must have seen us all like freaking out doing this Ouija board and he come out and shouted like you know just like sh- like scared us so no I'll never do a Ouija board <laughs> so that was like one of the scariest days of my life that's one thing I've been raised to is like never touch a yeah, Ouija board no. and I've you never had I've never had you. any inkling I, I wouldn't consider myself religious I was like raised kind of like in a Mormon household mm-hmm. and then oh. when the whatever happened and then I um Started going to youth group and then decided to give my heart to God when I was like 4, 13, 14. And then I started like studying calculus and physics and stuff at school. And then I was like asking too many questions and was yeah. like, yo, yeah. this is not for me. Well, exactly. Yeah. And now I just live freely. And and do you feel like there's something bigger than this or what What do you put it down to? I consider myself to be a fairly short person. So I think there's a lot of <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. No, um, I... If I'm completely honest, I try Please. not to think about it. Oh, yeah. I really try not to. Because it's... My little brain just gets lost in itself. Thinking of when I start to think of things in um, such an aspect that it may be, say, maybe not a person, but like a, a being that's created or controls mm. or the fact of there's fate or that it's written. or that, All that mm. sort of stuff freaks me out. Mm. I'd rather think that it just like happens spontaneously and then we kind of just figure it out. I love maths, but you think too much about maths. I'm like, yeah. oh, okay, this is happening again. Tom. Matrix, like, it's the yeah. code. Yeah. No, yeah. no, anything to do with, like, that quantum world is, like... I, it, it's fun, but yeah. scary fun. Yeah. Like, like roller coaster, but seatbelt falls totally. off. Yeah, no. Nah. Yeah. Like, cool, but not, yeah. Have you seen all the <laughs> kind of stuff that's been coming through with the James Webb um, photographs? <gasps> yes, stuff? I did! I think they were amazing. Mm. Sometimes I feel like they're not real. But, <laughs> but, but yeah, yeah. Have what you ever seen the, no, the telescope pictures? It. No. What was the name of the telescope? James Webb Telescope. Mm. Yeah. Are, what is like? What? It's like some big ass, like really fancy telescope that just took like what? What does it consider? Like, is it the best quality or is it yeah, like they, the they've just furthest, kind of, the deepest? Yeah, the deepest, but they've kind of like like we can only see in like a certain spectrum yeah and mm, they've, of like, they've and gone stuff. to like infrared and stuff so that you can see even more like i am not the person to but like and it's it's real cool because like to some extent it's the idea that you know the way like like the universe like just keeps going yeah yeah mm-hmm. it's the idea that like we've taken a photo of like so so way right that it's kind of like we've seen into the past yeah Ooh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's yeah, fucking heat. Yeah, mind blowing. Really. What is it, James? Something. James yeah. Webster. James, James Webster. Yeah. I will check yeah, it's not that our out. James Webster. Yeah, shout like, out. Oh, that guy. It's not that <laughs> guy, but yeah. who's he? Um, he is a oh, oh, local legend. Local. Tattoo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like um, 
just really strong, like moldy person. Sorry, yeah. Oh, he does I'd like he's like a tamaco artist and stuff. Oh, no. He does more he's than that. Yeah, like he's also a like a carver yeah. and cool. Does heaps of cool I feel stuff. Like we're not doing them justice. Yeah, but, yeah, I'm pretty embarrassed. Sorry, James. Yeah. But um, if you drive past the local school, um, have you seen the big colourful building? It's the new. Yeah. Oh my god, that's yeah, yeah. yeah that's so so James cool. Cool. Yeah, like, did that. a bunch of those carvings and stuff. Yeah. 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 He did. He did all of the carvings. He I did think. Phil Reed also helped him do them, but like it took him ages to do it. And like the school's been meaning to do that for like years, since like, yeah. like, like since, 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 before, since you like, before, the, before, even before I was like at school. Well, I was, yeah. must have been like five, six, seven, or I something when they started it talking took about it. So long. I don't know, Mercury Bay. Why know. did it take so long? Yeah, it's like I think there's like definitely not a lot of. Um, there needs to be more mouldy influence within this school like even yeah. around new zealand like it's just pretty like yeah i totally agree it's pretty shite do you know any mouldy words uh i would i just i don't want to offend anyone <laughs> so like <laughs> with my strong accent like i i got some um Tereo books for christmas oh um, look at that oh that's dude. good dude because uh, like i the reason uh, the reason i came here was like because uh, i looked at the maori principles like around mental health and like i just fell in love with with ah, yeah awesome like, awesome it was one of the reasons why I came here. Um, uh, what am I talking about again? Uh, what other, <laughs> oh, excuse yeah. me, what other Maori yeah. words do you know? Oh, no, I don't you know. You just said they're really, really lovely. I would think because of your accent, you might, because like, uh, say your vowels. No. <laughs> you're like she's no longer gonna talk I'm, I, on youtube sometimes i i watch the the kids uh today oh um nursery rhymes honestly oh, they're, they're, the best. Best. They're, they're the best, best. They're the best. my nephew because he's like he's about like one or two like he's turning two soon but like we always put all like the moldy cartoons on from yeah oh they're actually pretty good nah, it's and a like really good yeah way for, for someone like i feel like i one. i learn a lot of moldy during that as well because like i definitely need to speak a little bit more moldy i would love to be fluent one day that'd be awesome yeah um but like watching those programs i'm like oh this is like actually helping me <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's pretty mean yeah. it's pretty uh, i mean talking about those like catchy songs and stuff like they're still ingrained in my brain <laughs> mm. but uh, my favorite thing when i was traveling was it was like a bit of a joke but i hope it's not offensive i don't think it's offensive but um that like how do you spot a kiwi in a crowd I don't think you start saying to tear Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really? Do you know? Have you heard the song? Uh, I think so. Um, maybe th three years is enough. Sing to maybe you've heard sing the song. It, if you sing it in front of Maldi, um, of a Maldi, they'll like sing yeah. it back to you straight away. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a, it's pretty like it's pretty up there next to the national anthem. I'm sure. I'm pretty. Sh I'm pretty sure it's, a lot of New Zealanders can yeah. sing to tear away and better than they can sing the Maldi half of the national anthem. <laughs> actually, if I'm yeah. honest. Uh, maybe even better than the first, like the English heart, like the yeah. Name. Honestly, yeah. I just to um, tell me what the name yeah. is so I can put it on my Spotify list. I will send you the link. <laughs> yes. Um, you did you speak of national anthems? Did you guys have to do that thing where you sing the national anthem at like national uh, like at assemblies and stuff like gatherings and stuff? Never. At school? Like Liverpool is like very very against the the English establishment. But so the patriarchy. We, pretty much. Oh, isn't oh, it? That's not the patriarchy, isn't it? The monarchy. monarchy. Yeah. 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 But Boom. fuck patriarchy. <laughs> 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 The words just fall out of my mouth. Then. I love it. That's <laughs> your womanly instincts. Where is Liverpool in England? Because like it's, I've got it's really far bad. north. Mm. So up. So like um, that way. -ish. Yeah. So yeah. Um, like the Irish Sea, close. To the I'm gonna nod my head and act like, like I know. If you think really of it like a, a map like this, because I'm geographic challenged, so do same. So for all our listeners, I'm holding my hands up in the air. <laughs> um, if it, if it's like you're looking at the UK like this, yeah. it's like up here it's yeah. considered up but it's north yeah because north it's here is kind of i don't know I mean, what i'm talking yeah. about anyway. I mean, we're, we're totally <laughs> upside down here um so where have you traveled like have you you've traveled here obviously i traveled here yes and you've been to liverpool have you been to any other places uh i i mean liverpool like the uk was so close to europe like you know yeah. your, your holidays are, are in like like yours guys are Bali and yeah, you know, yeah. Rarotonga and those places, ours is Europe. So I consider I've done most of Europe, um, mainly like the hotter places, not not anything like Sweden yeah. or anywhere like that. What was like your favorite country to, to visit? Um, the most memorable probably was Spain because we would do that every year. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah, it's quite a common one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to travel there one day because 
Like everything's so close together. I feel like yeah. well, con- like considering because New Zealand is just so far away from fucking everything. Yeah. But like I want to travel to Europe one day because they it just looks so cool over there. Yeah. Mm. I that is probably one of the the main things that I miss is that you know it is very populated but when you when you get so many people together you get so much cool culture you know yeah. it's yeah. like um you know especially in hot places like spain like there's music and drinking and you know just like a, a real cool kind of nightlife kind of thing and i do do you think it is? <laughs> especially in town oh gosh when i went here i did my first ever like tour kind of thing because i was like super broke you, you're a yeah, I went, um, so like I said, I'm geographically challenged, but I know that I went along the Bal- Balkan coast. Okay. Is that right? The Balkans? Yeah. No? I don't know. So it's like, it like, I went from Croatia down to Greece and oh, then back up inland. Nice. Yeah. Um, and people were like, I, like, I mean, I, w- I wouldn't call myself stupid, but um, I like know nothing about the world. I mean, I'm so sure That's everyone's in the same boat. And, like, and, I, and I still openly say that I'm geographically challenged because I, I mean, I could sit on, if I look at a map, I can read it, but I couldn't tell you my foot from my ear, like, honestly. <laughs> um, and I had never heard of some of these countries. Like, obviously, you hear of Greece and stuff, especially in the summer, and you're like, ooh, 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 Croatia and stuff. But being on the ground, it was like exposing myself to a whole different t- type. I don't know how to say it, like type of culture, because sp- I've spent a lot of time in over in a- uh, Southeast Asia and Asia countries and stuff like that. Mm. Um, I'm Maori here, you know, dealing with like w- when it comes, not wouldn't say indigenous cultures, but like uh, um, those sorts of. Um, I think it might be correct to say like the different hemispheres of mm-hmm. like na- natives or culture is different. Like I mm. mean, it's a lot of white people on that side. And a lot, you know, the, yeah, all the brown fellows over here. Um, and yeah, going over to Europe, it was the most craziest thing. Um, just discovering, I, I would call them small, but I won't call them small. Like places like Bosnia and stuff mm. like that, and learning that history. Uh, I just cried like my parents but we're like talking on the phone they were like i was like oh we're gonna go do this and that and we walked around to see the excuse me but i don't know if it's offensive not to to name them incorrectly but do you guys know about the like red uh, i think they call them poppies or something the red roses on the ground the paint they're painted on like all over the streets from the civil war Mm. the war with something yeah no anyway but um, my folks knew about it and i had no no clue at all i had no nothing about history or anything Mm. like that and my pop was just like, like, oh, I was like, yeah, we're going to do this like this tour thing tomorrow, mum. And he's like, oh, are you like going to be okay? I was like, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of know what it's about. Like, that's a bit sad, but like, you know, it's sort of a memorial uh, mm. instance. He's like, just, just call me, just call me, because oh. he, he already knew, and I was oh. a bit like, and I was just wrecked for like yeah. a couple of days. It was absolutely heartbreaking, yeah. but it was such a cool experience because over here we have things like our just just across the way we have our um the anzac memorial Mm -hmm. and like that's a very sad time and what etc but it's just like experiencing that in like a different culture like the same way the idea of war and stuff and like somewhere else is just sort of i've got it trailing off a bit but but i think they feel it a lot well not that they feel a lot more but like it was a lot more present over there because the war never really came to new zealand and like Mm. That yep. effect. Yeah. I don't know where I was going with that, but it was like intense. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And actually, it's quite funny because, you know, those wars were what, like 50, 60 years ago, but actually, you still notice now. I mean, the, like grandparents in in europe you know they were they were alive at that time and you just find that, you know, that trauma is still alive and it kind of feeds into your kind of you know, the way you're brought up as well. Yeah, it was like we, I wouldn't say celebrate, but, you know, like things like Anzac, it seemed so long ago for us. Mm. Like, um, whereas that Bosnian war was so recent, Mm. so recent. I, like, genuinely couldn't believe it. It, And I won't throw any numbers out there because I I genuinely don't know. I don't want to defend anyone. But it was very recent and it Mm. was just, like, just a whole crazy different perspective. Is there anywhere you'd specifically love to go next? Um, I just want to, I would like to go to like Indonesia, ma- mainly for like um, just a total culture difference and like 
like temples and things like that like uh, that just fascinates me <laughs> it does it does actually look really cool over there. have I, you not been there no i've like never left new zealand but i really want to like travel to asia because like they have like real like sh- for the street food and stuff mm, like that mm-hmm. i've watched like heaps of um like netflix stuff i'm like oh there's like this program is <laughs> like food. street food <laughs> asia it's so good yeah, i was like oh my god in. i can't even understand what they're saying but i was like bro that looks good <laughs> yeah that's yeah. one thing when i first went to southeast asia because i wouldn't say I mean, I grew up considerably a picky kid, but I wouldn't say I was like too turned down to things. I'm just yeah. a real visual, and I hate bad smells. I can't do bad smells. But like, um, but the moment I went to Southeast Asia, and then I went back, and I went back. It's just the food is my favorite thing, mm. and like people always talk about it as you know, the, the, as a way to travel. I think when you travel, you kind of if you're not staying in a place for like a living there, you tend to find like a little niche for yourself like mm. what you not what you travel for but like what yeah. you enjoy the most and totally the food and it no is amazing i just get terrified like everyone talks about like barley belly and stuff and i'm just like i have seen oh. that but i'll still probably eat anything oh, that's yeah. put in front of me i so. reckon you just you just grab something straight off the street always <laughs> always you would never catch me in like a restaurant but you catch something off the like not catch something you eat street food and if you get a bit sick, get it out of the way. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. It's the same over here when yeah. you get a tummy bug. Like, I mean, are, yeah. you, are you just going to like... So, like, once you just get... Once you, like, eat something dodgy and then, you know... Well, not specifically that. dodgy, but, yeah. I mean, people tend to stray away from, like, some of the best... Some of the best food. Yeah. Like, and stuff is street food. It's my favourite thing. That's what Blue Ginger is based off is, like, street food. So, yeah. it's, like, it's the best way to eat. Yeah. Mm. My favourite way to eat, actually. I could do with uh, sitting on the street waiting for some nasty green and with a bintang in my hand on this, just literally on a plastic chair on the street, man. It's my favourite way to eat. The best. Sounds like you're living the life. Yeah, sounds yeah, pretty dude. good. It's very good. Um, especially now that um, it's considerably, like, open too. Mm. You know, the borders and stuff and people mm-hmm. are already going over to holiday. Yeah. Have you guys seen that new visa? I don't know how, de- like, legit it is, but... Like I think some of those countries are offering a visa for like a like digital nomad kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah, that's all legit. Yeah, yeah. What's, I mean, what's that about? I'm like blank. Here. So if you've got like a where you're making money online, then yeah. you can get a visa based on that, and you can just kind of go and live. Oh, in that's any of cool. These countries, yeah. Mm. So that's like it's to really cool. to bring people in. Um, yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool. Excuse me. What has been your favorite thing about New Zealand so far? I I would have Other to say. Other than this podcast. <laughs> yeah this has been pretty good <laughs> um i would have to say the the nature just being surrounded by nature is like a massive healer for your mental health i th- i think personally for me anyway have you been to australia no oh cool i was gonna say just to compare like you don't have to worry about anything trying to kill you exactly. yeah <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. and this is like a stray boar running around and Ah, you're pretty safe here. There's not a lot of things that can kill you around here. Mm. Like the people, maybe, but yeah, I was gonna say the crazy bush people. I, I yeah. did, don't I did do some deep. research before I came here initially, and apparently you've got these like <laughs> tiny white, like white spiders that are oh that are white tail like spider, yeah, yeah, and they can kill you. And I was like, <laughs> eh, they're well, fine, they're harmless. Do they kill you though? Yeah, can they, they can. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, hear, hear me out. I've never heard of anyone dying from one. Uh, and people have been bitten by. Yeah, them. they get. I've been, they've been known to like have like really gnarly bites. Okay. Like the like not the pain of itself of biting you, the tiny, but like the aftermath is pretty gnarly apparently. But uh, again, I've never been bitten by one. I've come across them like heaps throughout my life, but like you'd be totally fine, I reckon. What's that? Can they hear that? Oh shit. Oh. Hey guys, uh, quick intermission. Um, not at all, but if you can hear <laughs> in the background, we have a siren going off. Uh, Georgie, do you know what the siren's for? Um, <laughs> <laughs> she's going to use her mind to, powers. Like, telepathically figure out what's going on. Oh, I didn't mean to say that, but I've been I've been here for like three she's like, years. Yeah, something I prepared <laughs> earlier. <laughs> I've heard the siren. Before. Oh, you've been here for three years. Sorry. I was trying to do like a thing. Anyway, the siren's going off in the background. Can we all just take a quick hospital of bliss for anyone, unless it's a, if it's a car accident or anything like that, we hope uh, that everyone's okay. Oh. Isn't that just... I'm sure that's just a weather warning. Because they don't they do don't, They don't do it do for they the... Do they, don't do as a for, no, no, they don't no. do sirens for weather warnings, don't bro. They? No. they don't do it for the tsunami, though, either. No. no. I think that's... No. Why don't they do that? Apparently it was, like, funding, I think. Yeah, was it? it was a money thing, I think. Yeah. Um, I want to know if I'm about to die, bro. Like, have you ever been afraid of a tsunami since moving here? 
Because the siren's gone out of out of the work since you've been here, I'm pretty sure. Um, no, I've never been scared of a tsunami. No. Should I be? <laughs> <laughs> Just try to you know, like you know, in, try right instill, no, no. Um, instill me with fear. Or? <laughs> um, with that siren, I remember working in hospitality. Um, and when the back before COVID, the good days, um, we'd have lots of seasonal travellers come working. And, and mm-hmm. I was good friends with this guy, Tobias. He was, <laughs> he was German. He was hilarious. And he was just a few tables away from me and the siren goes off. And I could see these guests who were also travellers, you know, mm. uh, like, whoa, what's going on? Like, what's, what does this tsunami mean? Or oh, a siren mean? And then, uh, and like, Toby, he obviously knew that, like, if the siren goes off, it's a tsunami kind of vibe. But he starts, he's like, Chloe, what's the siren? I was like, oh, don't worry about it. It's fine. He's like, is it a tsunami? Is it a tsunami? And he starts telling guests that it's like, oh, a tsunami warning. And these guests are like, tsunami, <laughs> tsunami. I was like, no, 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 no. And, like, and they're like, starting to like, get out and shuffle around. I was like, whoa, whoa, no, no, it's not a tsunami. I was like, and then I, but he said, I was like, he doesn't know either. He's German. Like, um, I was like, when it goes, when it goes, what is it? Stays high. Yeah, when it yeah. goes high and stays mm-hmm. high, mm-hmm. get high. Get high. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now we're going to have a quick break. Physically move to a higher place because it's a tsunami warning. Otherwise, when it goes up and down, it's um, for the volunteer fire brigade, etc. So mm. anything from a car accident to maybe a car But that no stalker. longer happens, right? They're just the with tsunami they warning no longer exists. Message, yeah. Which is slightly controversial. I think it's absolutely shite. So, uh, for an example, the last tsunami warning we had when Civil Defence sent out uh, a bunch of text messages to everyone's phones and they did that really obnoxious siren sound, mm. um, I was following up. I'm usually the one that allocated in my family home to keep on track and up to date with everything Civil Defence is sending out, what everyone's saying in town, because like roads get really congested really quickly. And... I happened to be, so there was an evacuation put out from civil defence, et cetera, for the local area um, at, to go to high ground. However, it was uh, somewhat cancelled, like delayed. It, they were like, you don't need to worry, it's no longer a threat here. It was further well, like further west or something, I don't know, somewhere else along the coast, further down the, um, I think it was New like Zealand. Kai or something. Yeah, I and, remember that. Um, but however, civil defence sent out a text message to everyone's phones about two to what well, hour and a half, maybe two hours later after that was announced, with the same information that was printed on the website in the morning, saying Oof. you need to get higher ground and everything. And I remember coming through town thinking everything's fine, like mm. I, I, absolutely fine if everyone's going to close up and go home. It's a stressful day. However, there were still a bunch of people in town wandering around like, where do we go? Like it's lunchtime. I wanted to go do something, and yep. like the whole of town's evacuating. A bunch of lots of people didn't. But a whole lot of people did because they were like the text messages, the text messages. I was like, there's no threat anymore. It's, I mean, yes, but it's up to it's people's responsibility to check the website, etc. But however, someone like Civil Defence sending out text messages to everyone's cell phones you should be the correct be, information. Yeah, totally. So I think that's absolute shite. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Next question. <laughs> <clears throat> Favorite animal? We're we gonna go on to that. I hate Sorry. animals. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Charge it. Yeah. Can I can I put a question in there for oh, yeah. everybody? So, you know, like how you were talking about, um, you know, like right at the start of the conversation, the thing with mental health and supporting each other. Um, with with guys and mm-hmm. like social media and other stuff, like I, f- I find a lot of supportive groups, you know, like of men chatting and, and sharing struggles and all that stuff. But like sometimes the face to face, the groups, you know, it always ends up with that macho thing of sometimes not not being able to chat and open mm. up. Like, is do girls is it something that comes more naturally, or sometimes girls also play like you know hard and actually don't open up? Like, how close do you feel like you have to be to friends and stuff to to talk about these things? Yeah, I I think in a in a friend circle, I I just thinking personally that there is always that kind of you know wanting to be the best version of yourself so you know you might not be as as honest but um i think now as a you know 30 year old woman i i find that i i find it easier to be vulnerable with people and to just tell people how i'm feeling so um yeah how about you ladies do you feel that you can talk to people i wouldn't think it's a it's tricky because i i genuinely don't really think it's a uh a gender thing um however yeah. i am very aware that uh, men 
find it harder to have these safe spaces, mm. let alone mm-hmm. know where to start when it comes to talking. Yeah. Um, but I don't, in my yeah, in my personal experience, I don't really think it's a gender thing. No, I, don't. Um, yeah. I think what like again, what we talked about earlier, it's about ha- either having that safe space and so where you can go to, or creating a safe space, whether mm. whether it's with your friends, professionals, or you know, with your pen and paper, as you were saying earlier. Just like it's just about <laughs> not that you don't have friends, <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I don't think it's a gender thing at all. No, yeah, but not not just not um, forgetting that I know men do have some of their own struggles i think it's just like a lot more normalized for women to talk about like um, yeah th- well not just their feelings but just to talk in general i just think men just don't have a lot um those platforms i think they do have like spaces but just not it's just not um normal for men to talk about like how they feel like especially i think especially in my family it wasn't like um like coming from a moldy family i just don't think it was that like even for me, like as a woman mm. and and my brothers and stuff, it just wasn't like a thing. My parents wouldn't like sit down and like, how do you feel? Like what's mm, going yeah. on in your mm. life? I just yeah, I think it. I think it can, like, come from there as well. Just like, um, I know a lot of Maldives don't have like that. Like being brought up in that area, like in that space, you just don't really talk about yeah being sad and stuff like that. You mm. just have to like uh, you deal that, with that is stuff that because your own. Um, it, you know, like when I think of of. Maoris in general, you know, you just like warrior and fighters. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, it's yeah. like, it's like that staunch kind of like I'm like tough. I'm yeah. a man. I'm a warrior. Like yeah. you're you're tough. So like you don't. Um, why would why would I experience those type of things? Like yeah. you just mm-hmm. have to get on with it. And I think like throughout the years, even like experiencing all like the land loss and just like um, discrimination throughout the years, like it's been. I think it's like super hard, like to to feel empowered and stuff like that when like everything that you're like you're living with and like in society and stuff like it's just like people telling you like you're not like you're brown you're bad like and stuff like that so I think Mm. it's hard to talk about feelings and stuff because you just want to be tough and like Mm. I'm the man not talk about yeah and I think there's kind of a lot lot to talk about there with that kind of ancestral trauma yeah around um you know land loss and things you know you you might not think of that as a a daily trigger but you know somewhere in there you know that you know probably adds to the kind of I think it does like like um like with like loss of identity and I know like a lot of Maldi suffer from mental health big like they might not consciously know that it's from like uh, like just colonization in general yeah. but i think a lot of people struggle with um mental health because of that kind of stuff and yeah i think well you know yeah. there's it's like a total different way of living you know like um living off the land and yeah, for the yeah. land is totally different to you know abusing and using yeah. the land you know it's mm. it's like it's a massive culture yeah. shift you know, I, I, it's my favourite quote I've heard, for, and I use it so often. Um, you know, you can't judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, Dr. Seuss. Um, and it's just like, you know, I, I found growing up also as a young Māori woman, and but dealing, going through and um, dealing with mental health and stuff, it, 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 it's sort of like you are told to take the harden up pill mm. but and then you start telling yourself that you should you need to be stronger because you should you should be but then when you start to realize when you started when i started to think to tie back to like systemic sort of trauma and stuff yeah, like yeah. that that i was like you know no wonder i'm not flourishing under these certain conditions because this is not for me yeah, it totally. never was not yeah. that it's like oh yeah i wish to go back and you know only kumara etc <laughs> kumara so but like it was just it's just sort of like you know there's no you always feel like there's not that much acknowledge acknowledgement for that sort of thing and if you think about it so for me it was like thinking oh that's such a big picture thing just so to think about the small picture stuff what's going on in my head and in my mm. heart you tend to go oh well you know if you don't really if you can't deal with the big stuff there's no point worrying about the little stuff um but I think I've seen just recently, like, uh, not too recently, but, like, just this whole new wave of um, Māori inclusi- inclusivity in, uh, in and across the spectrum in yep. corporate and workspaces in um, medical spaces, including mental health, even locally with um, Te Korowai and all the manakitanga they do there. It's amazing. And yep. I can genuinely vouch for that personally. Like, mm. it's just a whole different spectrum. And then... The, what you were saying to touch on what you were saying with the loss of identity mm. I've always been considered myself to be like 
the white one out of the group of Maori girls at school, and it was like I don't know why we used to, and I don't know, I don't, I really, I still now it comes out of my mouth, and it's it actually, but it, it weighs a bit more. I've always been told that Ma- Maori isn't like color; it's your your way of living and your appreciation for the land. Is that right, or is that just like? You know, a kind of no, that's a what great, people I, like I, to no, think. That's but, a great no, for way sure, to, like, definitely, look at it. yeah, definitely. Yeah, because so. you, you're not Maori because you sound different from everybody else, and you're not Maori just because you can speak Maori. Like, it'd be great if I could be fluent, and like, mm. it'd be great if you were fluent or whatever. But I don't think the language makes you Maori mm. necessarily. Mm. I, and there, well, there was a great conversation with um, Peter Johnson. Junior, I don't know if he goes by Junior, but um, on an episode a few weeks ago, where he was talking about like what it means to be Maori. Like, I mean, obviously, if you ha- you can fuck up, which is like your genealogy, mm-hmm. um, well, then you know you're Maori. But the idea of like terminology as well, like and the cultural side. Um, I mean, how long does it take for you to live here to be considered a Kiwi or a New Zealander? And like, and the terminology yeah. as well. Why does it have to be New Zealander? And like, why does that not make you Maori? Mm, like culturally that's a really good point it yeah is. it was pretty tricky mm. <laughs> it was a hard conversation if i wanted yeah. <laughs> but yeah so do, do you guys feel the the um the push for maori presence in in like political areas and things is Ooh, positive yeah. for i'm all for it yeah. i it can never be in like needs to be more yeah. always more yeah. we're not um taking away from like the big steps we've had even the little steps um i don't think of it can't think of his name right now but there's a great video of a young um of a young gentleman in youth parliament and he's there in his quarter while and it is just Powerful. absolute ball breaking yeah. like, i fucking love it like so shout nice. out to you bro um and i just, just more and I yep. hate the fact that it's shocking to people. Like, and the way you were saying, well, I've, like, I've heard people you saying, know? you know, it's like, it, you know, it's it's been shoved down our throats, and and I thought, like, oh. actually, gosh, like wankers, yeah, I, a little I, bit. I, I just can't. I mean, there's no like r- weird reverse. I don't know the terminology, but like, weird reverse understanding, mm. where it's like, consider us natives back in the day whole colonization thing and it's like we're not trying to colonize like yeah modify you yeah we're just trying to make some space for ourselves totally. like we don't there's no sort of like the black lives matter thing too like where it's not about we want to be the priority race yeah. or or whatever it's like the fact that you think that acknowledges the idea that you already are like yeah that, i mean you know like yeah, I, I guess you can't speak for everyone though there will be yeah. some people out there who, oh for who sure there's always that, yeah, but there's, you know like the majority is you know there's just people just want to be heard and yeah. respected yeah and, and, and without forgetting the history though you know you, sure. you gotta yeah yeah but i yeah i love i love seeing how much more moldy is included in so many things these days it just i want more love that yeah yeah. Oh, yes. Can I ask? Can I put another topic on the table? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So, so you know, like how? Because you said, "Oh, now I'm now I'm a 30 year old woman," you know, like, and and I'm 33, so you know, like it's it's not 33 nice in a couple of weeks. I'm there still 32. Happy birthday! Thanks. Happy early birthday! Thank you. Oh, I'm on the 23rd, 23rd actually, not so far from you, oh, right? Oh, okay. 19th? Yep. Um, anyway, and like, so I, I kind of relate to that, looking back and thinking about things that I've done, the, you mm. know, like different things that I would do. And, and I often think about regret because it's very common for a lot of people to say, oh, no regrets. Yeah. You know, that is no regrets, no regrets, yeah. you know. But at the same time, I saw a guy talking about the other day, like putting regrets in a very different perspective. He's like, oh, I, I surely regret a lot of things, you know, like mm. acknowledging that they were not good makes me like less likely to make those mistakes again. It's like it feels like when you say no regrets, you know. I don't know. So I, yeah. I just wanted to put that out there because yeah. very different perspectives at the table there mm. when when it comes to regret. So yeah, yeah. I I kind of love what you said there um, because it would be nice to think, oh, I, you know, I've got no no regrets. But I, I I personally would say that you know, kind of. It's taken me so long to to kind of 
be okay with asking for help or support from people that actually I probably got in got in my own way for like you know my pro my progress professionally and I think you know that's probably one of my biggest regrets I suppose what like is it a regret because I would say that I've like yeah hashtag no regrets but there's definitely things I obviously wouldn't yeah. do again does that make it a regret I guess yeah well, no, know. that's no, just I a life lesson, isn't don't it? Know. That's like a life lesson of you, if you do something and you never want to do it again, that's just like... Yeah, so I'm still like, yeah, hashtag no regrets. <laughs> yeah, I guess you still have to do that thing to, to, to learn, learn the lesson. Yeah. So maybe you would still do that. And so I, mean, I don't know if it's a regret. I think there's yeah. some things that... I like to play the game, it could be considered regrets, only because I probably didn't have the mental capacity to consider it... Um, a lesson like, yeah. like as in at the time not that i'm like conscious every time i do something dumb to be like this is the lesson oh, this is like, but do you know what i mean like, to, 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 it's like so far gone now even though i'm like so, like young like so far gone now that i'm like oh, i wasn't really like consciously aware after the fact or any time after the fact mm. that to to really consider that like to really think about it now i'm just like oh i think that i don't even remember super deep. does that make sense yeah uh, so yeah hashtag no regrets <laughs> Sorry, Leo. Yeah, you I'm sell? not sure whether we answered that, whether that was a question. Yeah, I guess or I'm yeah. like too young to have regrets. I wouldn't say any regrets yet. Mm. Yeah. This but podcast tonight? Yeah, no, probably. <laughs> Maybe when I, I get home. No. I think that's the reason why I asked, you know, like because yeah. as I said, probably when I was 20, how was it? I'm 24 this year. Yeah, like I was surely not, not fond of you know yeah. like being proud of anything you know it was like so oh yeah fuck it no regrets but <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. why I, I i was tuning in when she said oh i'm a 30 year old woman you know like and that's how i feel like nowadays i'm you know i don't i don't feel ashamed of the things that i've done and yeah. i understand that they, they've brought me here mm -hmm. but like you know like i always think oh no regrets mm, not so sure you know some yeah. things i could have done better yeah so mm -hmm. it's just interesting how the power of saying that you know like oh no regrets you know I, I just I was just curious about uh, yeah, the reactions that. on on that. Mm. Can I can I add something from our audience? Because some people are on our live chat. What happened if we just said no? <laughs> like, say no. Say no. No. Yes. Yes. It depends. Who is it? No. <laughs> kidding. Who is it? We 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 have a, we have a question from Chloe and some comments. So Chloe asks, "Hi Georgie, I was wondering, did I say Chloe? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Hanako." Oh. <laughs> hi, Annika. Hi, Annika. Uh, she said, hi, Georgie. I was wondering what type of subjects are covered in criminal psychology. Was there quite a bit of science? I have always been curious about it, if you remember. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, it was a very long time ago. Um, and I, uh, mine was crossed. Um, I specifically did um, corporate crime, so mine was specifically around um, corporate crime and politics. So um, it was, there was some science, but mainly psychology and, um, you know, kind of delving deep into why people do what they do. So, yeah, yeah. It, was a, it was a long time ago, so I've lost a lot of brain cells in those years, so <laughs> I can't remember much. No, it is good. W w would, you, would you feel like, would you be interested in, in going back to the, the fuse? Um, the, the criminal element doesn't excite me anymore. Like, I feel like the, the part of, um, my degree more so is the psychology side, um, in regards to having an impact on mental health. So that is kind of my passion. You actually, uh, you actually focusing on, on something that would happen before the crime, right? The kind of yeah, the prevention. Yeah, preventative, love the, yeah, love the kind of preventative stuff, which doesn't happen enough, especially back in the UK, you know, it's all kind of band-aid, throw a band-aid on and, um, you know, deal with it later kind of thing. So yeah, preventative stuff is where I'd love to be. Mm, it's interesting because so many things come from from the UK as like uh, forward thinking. Yeah, you know, like I love the researchers on uh, uh, psychedelics mm. that, that most of them start mm -hmm. there, and I know that there are a lot of interested people in, in making yeah that um, that pressure on the health system. You know, like yeah. less. Yeah, totally. But, There's like massive studies on MDMA and things like that, which are like really mainstream now back in the UK. You know that, but it just hasn't. You know they haven't agreed on it you know mm. and there was some uh Tepai, I, I i didn't want to interrupt you because the conversation kind of went on but when you asked about uh recommendations on on netflix mm -hmm. there's a there's a new series from um 
very famous writer and teacher called Michael Pollan. Yeah, mm. he's like, yeah. I was watch. I was watching like a little bit of that the other yeah. day. Yeah, how it's to that, how to change your mind? Is yeah, that the yeah, one? yeah. So that's that's fascinating. Eh? Like four solid episodes on uh, the power of psychedelics mm. and, and you know mental health in general, but also like for for all the things and. It comes from a very genuine space, you know, like he's very honest and yeah. upfront. Well, you know, him. scientists are naturally explorative and I think it's just an area that, you know, hasn't been, you know, acknowledged as it should really. Hmm. I think it's super important that they're doing it because so many people are taking these drugs. So you mm. might like you you might as well have yeah. a look at what it's actually doing to their brains. For sure. Mm. Cool. I'm just gonna read a couple of more uh comments here, then I'll I'll throw another question into um so I'm, I'm not sure if this is a great question, George, but if you have something, some input. Um, hi, Georgie. How do you feel um, mental health services in the UK compared with those in New Zealand with waiting times for therapy in the UK, two years plus pre-lockdown mm. in the UK? Is New Zealand proving better care? Um, I don't know what the wait times here in New Zealand are, but I yeah they, they're huge back in the uk and um before i left a lot like you got priority for um counseling and things if you you know you had issues like gambling and things like they they did this massive drive like if you were you know gambling and things like that then you would get straight into a counselor i think you know maybe that's changed now and the priorities have changed but it's just crazy how you know it's like it's not based on your severity it's like oh you know if you tick a box kind mm. of thing um that's crazy yeah yeah and, and 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 actually again like if we could do more preventive work hey yeah. to avoid yeah people to need uh those kind of supports hey it would be great mm. because yeah there's a lot of people asking for it yeah but again I, I think it's a bit deeper isn't it absolutely and i think that's you know it's kind of um needs to start in like schools and you know just having someone available f in like you know s like early on families and things like that do you remember having any approach in that sense at school in my school yeah uh, no no <laughs> no. <laughs> no what about you girls and like it, mental health support yeah it? yeah because like there's there's um there's a lot of classes for for health and and you learn about substances and stuff but like and i know that obviously the counselors and everything they they they, they are around but um yeah just like a, an overall thing did you feel like it was a subject that it would be brought to the to the table or no no not really um honestly i don't really know only because i wasn't really looking for it mm -hmm. I, like there were times where i probably like there was like a couple of years where i just kind of didn't really go to school yeah but like um i don't really remember getting much support but that's probably my fault as well because i wasn't really like i didn't you want you want to you yeah. wasn't after it yeah yeah i, I think really there's know from from when i was at school there was like and by no means is it meant to be demeaning at all but like old ian who was like considered the school counselor who just like sat in his room and i know that because i was one of them one of those kids that were like we're gonna go see ian and you just like hung out mm -hmm. oh yeah I, yeah like but a lot like, of people just went there I mean, just to miss class yeah, yeah i mean that was there and but i mean he's a genuine I don't know if it's weird to call him like a resource, but like, you know what I mean? Like a genuine guy there, that's his job. Yeah. But personally, I found, I think it might have been just a personality thing, just because I'm like, absolutely love to chat shit and <laughs> have no idea what boundaries are. So a lot of, I had got a lot of support from just like the teachers personally. Mm. Like I like Muscle and Mike, shout out to Muscle and Mike, like having real young adult conversations with him about real life and across lots of different boards, like yeah. boundaries, you know, like it was, that was really healthy and supportive. Um, but in terms of the education side, I probably not. I learned a lot more than I did out of school to do with um, anything to do with mental health, really. Yeah. Um, other than the things of like physical, like the physical, your physical well-being, don't do drugs. Yeah. Sex. No, don't, do it. It. don't do that. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah. 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 Like, <laughs> well, Bad for you. What the heck? And you're like, well, actually, hmm, I'm a 17 year old girl. Yeah. Let me teach you. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but I think, I think that's the beauty of like something like the, the, 
the show that we were talking about, how to change your mind, you know, like because it's a platform that allows the conversation when in the educational system, it's less likely mm. that you're going to talk about the subjects because it's just not legal. You just cannot. So a lot of, of the teenagers, they get that message. Don't do it. Oh, but like, now why? I'm going to do you know, it. Yeah. Like, mm. and, and, I want to yeah. do it now. Well, yeah. com compared to what I can do, because I think that's the point. If you explain something, it might make sense, it might not. But like, if you compare with all the substances that are legal, you, you start to build something in your mind, you know, like, oh, why some things are, why some things are not. Mm, your own critical mm. thinking. Like, yeah, yeah, critical thinking. Yeah, I think it's just because so things are like taboo. That, and it's across a lot of things, especially when I, I think of when it comes. I don't want to, I, I really have like a strong opinion. I mean, I don't think I'm like allowed a strong, I don't know where I'm going with that. You can do but it. I, <laughs> but, sorry, so, but I mean, like when it comes to like, schooling and the education about what they can and can't well not that they can and can't but you know it comes down to the teachers like personal thing too yeah. like just because they don't want to just because they're like telling you not to do drugs and stuff like and not encouraging you to do illegal things like it's not the worst part like that's that's not the worst part about it like mm. they personally might have had a really bad experience or they just grew up in a very religious um what's the word conservative environment you know your school might be very super conservative but yeah. like i think it's like learnt behavior as well like those ideas thinking that just because it's illegal means it's super taboo yeah but like as leo said it's you know you can't like if you're a teacher you can't have that open conversation yeah. with a child about you know because you're you're in a paid position and you know it's like you have to be professional i suppose i think I've whereas like you know more open relationship uh, uh like talks with teachers yeah. out of school than like yeah. in school just mm. because you can't like you can't just talk about whatever you want yeah and i think also too it, it's there are some people just happy out there to never do anything illegal and by no means am i trying to incriminate myself and say that i have done illegal <coughs> things <laughs> but i mean if you're if there is a particular interest i think and i'm have a feeling i'm quite wrong here but like that you tend to seek out the answers yourself. Yeah. Like, I mean, uh, by no means am I being like, you're interested in drugs and just like a weird plateau. No, it's a plateau. Like, you want to understand why certain things are bad and why they're illegal compared to things that are, like sugar and caffeine yeah. and stuff like that, well, right? Well, you're young, you're, but, you're there to discover yeah, and you want to try. But I mean, like, if you're really that interested, I mean, I'm not assuming that someone will go out and find your local drug dealer, but I mean, you're going to have those conversations where you have those comfortable spaces. Yeah. yeah. I don't really, yeah. If that, does that, I don't know. Yeah, anyway. It does make sense, Chloe. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Can I, uh, Chloe, I'm going I'm to read one more comment and then there's a question. So, our friend Matt from the UK. There you go. Hey, Matt. <laughs> Matt <laughs> Cook. Matt What's Cook, up? yeah. yeah hey, he dude. says, social media, oh, because we were talking about social media, uh, social media can be a bit of a minefield when it comes to mental health. I have built up a good support network of friends who are there when I'm in crisis, and I always try to reach out to other friends or strangers when they may need some help. But there is another side to social media that can be triggering or very destructive and unhealthy. Mm. I actually saw this, uh, I watched this, uh, I think it was a BBC, like mini doco about these kids in the UK. Um, like one in the, like a group of two or three ended up like stabbing another kid because, uh, because they were bullying all the kids in one was, kind of, how do you say, like a snitch, you know, mm. and he kind of said, oh, I was the one. Man, and like th they planned all the, the, the stabbing, all that stuff, like mm. through, through social media, you know, like, mm. and then, like, I think we all know that these things happen, but when you see the cases, like very, very quite young, yeah. I think like was 11 or 12 years old, wow. you know, like yeah. you, you yeah. start to kind of like see the influence, you yeah. know, like that, that it causes, like we, we don't know yet, right? How this, this thing with growing mm. up yeah, with, yeah. with social media will become, we actually no. don't know yet. Mm. We can speculate as yeah. much as we want. That's good. Um, scary. Yeah, it's scary. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think there it is possible though, like to to have a, a healthy relationship from a very early age, with social media? With like yeah, devices, social media, and I would say so. I mean, I I think it's a very progressive thing, and it's not going anywhere. So that you know, there has to be a a positive spin to it. How how it's done, I'm not sure. Mm, I agree. I think it. I think so too. It's just a matter of. I mean. Um, 
let's per se say, especially in New Zealand, like it's an across the board, a lot of you guys were talking about a preventative thing. Like as fast as it's advancing, so should all the supportive avenues, yeah. whether it's mental health, whether it's like a physical thing where studies where you're watching too much graphic violence causes you to go yeah. plan murder. Like yeah. those sorts of studies and stuff that needs to be following it up as, yeah. as fast as it progresses, which I, I can't imagine it being easy, but it's what it should because I don't think t- t- technology is going backwards. Mm-mm. Yeah, no. What do you think, Tapai? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm on the same bus. <laughs> same bus. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going anywhere, that's for sure. Mm. Cool, so we got one question. I think I think this one is quite broad. We, we can go for like New Zealand or probably you know more about the UK, so that's even better. Are the funds allocated to mental health being distributed correctly? Um, I would say definitely not. I mean, I can, you know, probably be a lot more sure about that in the UK. Um, but I worked for a charity and, um, yeah, the, the money just seems to disappear and, um, yeah, never really goes to, gets to the source. Um, so I imagine that's probably the same. Yeah. Yeah, probably. I don't know much about that, so I'm not going to speak yeah. on too much. No, but I, I definitely mm-hmm. feel like yeah. mental health is not getting enough support. Yeah. And I think especially in, in these first stage, stages when legislation is just being implemented, you know, you want to have the right professionals involved and the right strategy. It's just up. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I just think, you know, money is spent probably unwisely did you see that um for our audio listeners <laughs> uh, georgie just almost threw her glass of water across the table <laughs> but she caught it um which is no news right we got the leak today uh, yeah we got some leak we haven't there. you know we were that was incognito I, oh, it it I don't think people notice at all well no, but now they, they do, mm. no, they do. but uh, why funny. comment on what you just said leo i I uh, don't think the money's reaching the right places. I don't think it's being, what is it, the word you said? Dissipated. Uh, dissipated, yeah. Distributed, yeah. Distributed. Um, uh, in the right area, especially like, uh, it's it's quite well known now. I mean, uh, I mean, for me, I see it often. It's just the talk about uh, rural community areas, especially when it comes to uh, uh, Māori um, people's, persons. Uh, mental health um even just here in the coromandel um since me growing up there were certain things like uh cams child adolescent mental health services the the nearest place uh, base was hamilton or thames or thames a little bit but mainly hamilton and just growing up while i was using the services they got cut off and Mm. i could no longer see anyone unless i could travel while i'm in uh intermediate middle school you know, like, how yeah. am I going to go during the middle of the day? All that sort of stuff. Um, eventually, I had to stop. And then I had to travel to Whangamataa, which is what? Like, two hours? Well, maybe not two hours, but uh, like an hour and a half. Yeah. Maybe yeah, two hours two away. Yeah, I'd be super you know? interested to find out, like, how, like, legally, how, you know, because this town is growing and there's, yeah, you know, the, a lot more houses. Like, legally, you know, when do services have, have to kind of? be provided. Yeah. I don't, it's like, far, there's got to be some type of legal. Is there in the UK? I'm sure. Well, we don't have like you know everywhere's populated like yeah yeah, yeah. so because that that is very yeah. interesting because in my head it just seems stupid for it not to exist well, like a rule or like a also, boundary rule. Also, we're, you we're know, aware that there's vulnerable you know vulnerable mm. people here. Like how you know like when does it become the government's like you know legal duty to yeah. to step in and be like okay yeah. I'm sure there's something yeah. In saying that, I am quite stoked about. I'm just trying to decide if I'm ready, if there's any, going to be any backlash. But like, um, I'm quite stoked with what old Auntie Cindy's done and rolled out, Labor's rolled out in the last okay. few years. Um, the fact that it's talked about mm. is a step. Yeah. For Māori, for us Māori people, uh, the fact that it's talked about is a step. It might not be enough. It might not be what we want, but it's a step, like seriously. Um, and the doctors... Um, go to your local GP and stuff and you you know you just feel like you need to talk to someone or you're having a bit of a wobbly it's free you get three free sessions mm-hmm. with a counselor um and then they are there to help you uh if you want to progress or um yeah go see anyone else specifically or anything thing like that you know the fact that there's um lots of talk about it right now and 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 in schools I don't know how pushed it is I'm no longer at school but I know it is it talked about at school you know like it's it's just a lot more aware I'm not sure if that's just like a general world time movement but like i'm pretty stoked with what mm. labor's done i mean everyone there's always room to do, for, to, to do better you know but just wanted to put that in there 
I'm not so anti like, oh, they've been shit. They've done pretty good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. It's good to acknowledge people yeah. for what they've done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pat on the back. Mm. Yeah. Okie dokie, team. I do find myself a little bit peckish. Um, in saying that, Georgie, mm. it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks, Thank you, you for riding on my plane. Um, <laughs> sorry it's been a bit bumpy, but we've really enjoyed your company. I personally have. Thank you very much for coming. Tapaya. Thank you very much. Thank you. I feel like I've had some really deep conversations and now I need to like decompress. Mm. Are you going to have voice a tea? That? Yeah, and, and, and write in my journal at home. Oh, Here we go. go. It's Love on that. camera day one. <laughs> yeah. No, but thank you. I've actually really enjoyed having conversations. Thank you. I don't know whether I've said, I can't remember anything. Don't worry, neither. <laughs> neither. Oh, neither. Mm. Well, you can watch it though. I will not be doing that. You can, <laughs> well, you can listen to it. <laughs> Spotify. Uh, thank you very much, Leo and Taylor. And thank you to everyone at home, and especially you that interacted with our video. Don't forget to subscribe and like. And someone will see you another time. Bye.